The first time I laid eyes on today's subject, uh, I had to ask myself, um, is this guy wearing an eye patch and a, and a beret? And, and why is he saying fracker and stuff like that? Why isn't he cursing, man? So, yeah, the first time I saw him, he made a cameo on Screwers Lupa's 10th uh, episode. Um, to find out that this guy has his own theme music and good lighting. I was like, well, I gotta look this guy up. And, um, I looked him up. He's uh, His YouTube stuff is under Third Act Films, but I will provide a link for his Blip TV account. Um, his name is Apollo Z Hack, and he's actually a very creative individual. He heads a, a miniseries now called the Reviewerverse Saga, which I believe should um, slowly gain some popularity because it's actually really good. It's, it's really, really entertaining, really good writing, and the special effects are fucking awesome. So, join me for a sit-down chat with the one and only infamous mother fracker of them all, Apollo Z Hack. Alright, so your first question is, what got you into film? Uh, Jurassic Park, when I was uh, eight years old. Um, it was my first PG-13 movie I'd ever saw, and up until that point, I wanted to uh, be a paleontologist, and... Uh, the minute I saw Jurassic Park, all of a sudden I was like, I want to be in the movies. Um, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't really get into actually doing any kind of film stuff until about 2007, where I kind of had like a midlife crisis at age like 21. Um, I was like, uh, oh, God. I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something with my life. So I went on to uh, uh, Craigslist, and they have some like list for gigs and stuff. And there was something on there for like, oh hey, we need like uh, a PA for this local production and I'm like hey I got no experience but I'm willing to learn blah 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 and the very next morning at like 7 o'clock I got this phone call from this guy named Daniel Laguerre and uh, he's like uh, yeah man if uh, if you're interested uh, we need somebody um, you know come on out and you'll be my assistant so I mean it was just a local production it wasn't anything big or major but you know my first day I was only there for two hours but I learned more about the whole process of filmmaking in those t- first two hours than I had ever had at film school and, you know, anyone who's interested in this kind of thing should, in my opinion, should get onto a set first um, before they even, you know, pay some exuberant amount to do this shit. Because the, the dirty little secret is you don't need a degree to work in film. Uh, you need a, a, a really hard, uh, great work ethic. And if, you know, you learn the ropes, so to speak, and then boom, you're there. Um, and there are people who I know who have never even gone to film school yet. They're continually working within the industry doing various things so it's kind of cool right on so you stated you went to school what school did you go to um i did uh some stuff over at scottsdale community college here in arizona um i kind of dropped out because uh not going into too much detail uh there's a I, I was not a fan of the politics there, you know. Right. Teachers will uh, will pick and choose their favorites, you know, who gets to do this, who gets to do that. Um, and, you know, you got a lot of guys there with egos. And I'm not saying that I don't have an ego, because I do to an extent. But I, I, I do. Rather, it's yeah, gigantic. Well, <laughs> we all do, you know. Yeah. But, you ever make love to your ego? It's uh, it's weird. You're just going to look it in the eye and just go, don't worry. It's cool. I'll call you tomorrow. I swear. Yeah, my, my ego's pretty fat and ugly, so whenever I do it, I kind of feel ashamed. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, it, um, it, it, it was cool because I, I, a lot of people that are currently working on a policy hack I met from there. Um, so if anything, film school is good for networking. Um, but outside of that, I, you know, whatever. Uh, for me, it, it wasn't my thing at the time I'd rather out be going out and doing my own thing rather than sitting in a classroom watching some other guy get chosen because you know he sucks the teachers you know what um right and uh you know whatever um next question is uh I have to ask because I've seen clips on like all your uh hack down files um who on earth is this whiskers guy like I swear there was a <laughs> clip there was a clip of him I think he was getting violated by a, a guy in a turkey outfit <laughs> Was was that going on? Oh, stuff? Uh, wow! That that boy, Oscar, you do your research, my friend. I'm I'm, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I have to. It's just like it's. I saw it and I was just like, what the fuck is that? Or, that's not even a mustache. Those are whiskers, and and, and then the, the thing with the turkey, he's just like grinding them. You know, it's like they sh- you should have had R. Kelly playing in the background and and make it romantic. And I was just like, ah, oh, man, totally still respect the guy. Totally still respect the guy. We just yeah. ask about it. I, I have been told that it's been the worst thing I've ever done. I still stick by it. It sounded like a good idea at the time, but 
Uh, long, story, <laughs> long story short, Whiskers is actually based or was based on a real person that I knew. I won't go into details about that. Um, but it was a short film that I did. It can still be seen on Blip, uh, not on the Apollosiac one, but Whiskers has one of its own. Uh, it was a short film I did back in very early 98. It was a very whacked out comedy about Whiskers, who is this man cat who has been breaking into the house of his next door neighbor, who is an orthonologist at the local zoo. He's eating all the <laughs> birds. And then one day she brings home a buzzard giganticus, which is a, you know, it's just a guy in a bird outfit, you know, but he's a giant buzzard. <laughs> So Whiskers breaks into the house to try to eat the buzzard, but then the buzzard attacks him and actually finds out that he's going to try to eat Whiskers. So you get this giant man bird and this giant cat man trying to eat each other. And it, it's really <laughs> bizarre, really weird. You know, I, I, I've you either love it or you hate it. And most people hate it. Uh, but it was it was fun to do at the time. Um, but, you know, I. Yeah, dude, you put production behind it. That's the thing. Like, if you look at your if at your Facebook account, which I'll edit this part out if you want me to leave a link for it or not. That's up to you. Um, like, you actually have lighting and stuff for it. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, you you gave it a professional look. I mean, you're talking to a guy who's one of his triumphs on his YouTube account is him wearing a mullet, talking like a redneck, and running headfirst into a truck <laughs> because you want to start a fight with it. You know, it's like you you put work into it, man. It shows. That's why it's like so watchable and enjoyable. You know, I just, I mean, it, we, we try to do some stuff. I mean, it's, it is pretty unwatchable to a certain extent, but it was a learning experience. And also, uh, that was kind of the first time that I had worked with Jeff Green, uh, who plays um, uh, Sonicario in Apollosiak. He's the guy with the blue mohawk that gets blown away in episode four. Um, <laughs> he, he came on board as an uh, assistant director, and our friendship kind of really just kind of sprung from that. I'd known him previously, but that's when we really started hanging out and working. So um, it was cool. Um, I, I mean, again, it, it was a, a stepping stone in kind of like the learning process of things, you know. Uh, but as Allison would tell you, uh, Curious Lupa, she says that Whiskers is kind of like my Melvin brother of the Joker <laughs> because it's it's just so damn bad. Yeah, but it's but. fun because it's so bad, though. That's why <laughs> I like it. it. It's just I was just like, wow, man. I'm all right. Um, <laughs> It's pretty obvious in all the reviews that you do online. Um, you're, it's safe to say you're a geek. Uh, yes, what sir. makes you geek out the most? What What does someone have to say in order for you to sit there and be like, oh, man, if I could just put my two cents in, I'd school that dumbass about it. <laughs> um, uh, it, it. So are you asking me, like, you know, what what just makes me want to just, like, jump into a conversation, just, like, yep. go off on them or the, something like that? The moment uh, they, they say something wrong about it and you're just like, ah, 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 you shut your mouth, STFU. Um, maybe maybe something like Godzilla or or something like that. You know, I'd say something like Common Rider, but the thing is, I really don't know that much about Common Rider. I love Tokusatsu to death, but I'm not an expert on it. Um, you know, uh, if if people are bashing, you know, some movie that I really like, like uh, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but if it's some if it's a a movie that I know pretty well, and they're like, well, this not, I'd, I would just go in there and be like, no, you know what, whatever. But I, I'm kind of a I don't get into that. I don't like getting into that kind of discussion uh, or not discussion like with your question, but the, the kind of flame war kind of aspect because, Oh wait, 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 no Battlestar Galactica. That is one, sir. That's one right there that I will just jump right into and be like, no, it sucked and blah, blah, blah. But, but, right. But yeah. So uh, right on. Um, <clears throat> okay. When was a policy hack officially created? Ooh. What made you sit there and say, I'm going to grab a Ray and eye patch you know some leather gloves and I'm gonna go with it you know I, I actually think that the idea came about in uh, the summer of 2009 because uh, it was right while we were doing uh, this short film called uh, I, I, it was one that I did called uh, Legna 20 and I don't know what, what made me think about it but I was just like you know what I want to do this review show and we'll, we'll like up the production value and whatever else and uh, then you know it was just about you know developing a character and and how to make this character different, and uh, you know, first the, the beret thing came in, and I think the eye patch eventually came in a little later, and then the glove thing happened, and uh, you know, um, little did I know that people would be like, "Oh, you're just a Maddox ripoff," or if you've seen a, uh, um, uh, what is it called, um, Living in Oblivion, uh, the uh, the cinematographer character in that Wolf, 
is uh, he, he's wearing a beret, he's wearing an eye patch. Uh, I think he's wearing some gloves too. So <laughs> little did I know, uh, but you know, the eye patch thing was like derived from uh, Colonel Ty and Battlestar, and the beret thing was just to kind of be. I, I've seen all these pretentious, you know, people working in the film field, you know, wearing berets because it's, you know, oh, it's so artsy and whatever. And, you know, it's kind of trying to harken back to uh, to Apollo's roots as a film student reject kind of thing. <laughs> so, so yeah, pro- probably in about the summer of 2009. And it didn't actually it didn't actually start filming until late, like that year, like December of 2009, um, I think. Um, one thing is I always want to know, and what what made you start reviewing what was the thing that you that you that you liked that you thought you know because i meant remind you like nowadays you could type in reviewer in the search field in youtube.com and you will get a crap load of results oh yeah if you have people like yourself and rue of clan the gray wolf and of course the awesome oscurus lupa that have the ability to entertain as well as possibly educate you on the subject matter at hand then you got people that just are downright horrible uh, what made you sit there and say, you know, I want to be part of that crowd, and you know, I'm going to do something different to try to stand out? What made you do all that? Um, I I think uh, like a lot of people, uh, um, you know, I, I was a uh, I, I discovered Angry Video Game Nerd and Nostalgia Critic back in '08, and then you know you see the the big brawl, their first year anniversary thing, and you're just like, oh my god, that looks like so much fun, and uh, you know you start discovering other people, and you know it just it seemed like you know there was a lot of things in there that I could do. It's like, you know, okay, you know, I can, I can act a little bit, not the greatest actor. I I know some film stuff and I could do this and I have access to equipment. Might be able to like do something a little different. So, um, and I had done movie reviewing for the high school paper back like many years ago, uh, for about two or three years. And, uh, so I kind of, you know, knew how to, you know, do a proper review per se. Um, so, you know, it was just a, a nice combination of elements. And obviously, you know, a lot of things have to be perfected because I wasn't just like, oh, I'm the shit right on the spot. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things, you know, that, you know, you got to learn along the way. But I honestly felt like that at the time that, you know, there was a lot of things that, that I had and I could offer that maybe not everybody else could do, you know. And, and plus, like, what I was – and I'm still extremely lucky that, that this has happened um, – nobody's talking about the movies that I really, really like. Like, nobody is really talking about the Godzilla movies. Nobody's really talking about Kamen Rider. I mean, you got you got guys out there like Easy Rider and stuff like that that are uh, talking about, like, Tokusatsu and, and everything. But you're not seeing anybody, like, talking about it in a way that maybe just, like, the average Joe can get. Because I really don't think, you know, the average Joe's going to check out the Gamera trilogy, which is about a giant fire-breathing turtle that flies around like a UFO. But, you know, if I, <laughs> if, if I can sell it to you and tell you it's oh. like, dude, this is single-handedly not only the best Japanese giant monster movies of all time, but it's actually dark, it's gritty, it's violent, it's character-motivated. The special effects will blow anything out of the water in terms of, like, what Godzilla has ever done. You know, if I can pitch this to you in a way that, you know, maybe it would you would, it would make you want to go see it, like, you know, um, that's what I want. It, it's the fun of, of kind of, like you know, sharing your own kind of joys and love to other people um, so they can discover it too. Or, you know, if, if they don't like it, they don't like it. But, um, you know, that's that's just all part of the fun. So, um, like I said, nobody was really covering the kinds of movies that, that I really thought I could talk well about and 